NFL Super Bowl champion coach and BYU football alumnus Brian Billick joins us now on the Deseret First Credit Union hotline via Skype. Coach, we dug deep into the annals of BYU football highlights to find a touchdown catch from Yes U, receiving it from Mark Giles at Colorado State. How well do you remember all of your touchdowns at BYU? Well, I think that's easy to do because that may have been the only one. Uh, <laughs> so you did have to scour deep. But that was, uh, you know, that was a big game. That was kind of the, the game we turned it and started to make that uh, bowl run. And a lot of pressure on Lavelle at the time. I remember that very specifically. I remember his addressing the team the night before. And you got the sense. I don't mean to read too much into it that, guys, if we don't start going here, you know, I may not be around. And that's where we kind of turned it, and it was uh, it was great, great experience. That was year four of Lavelle Edwards. Also, I'd like to point out for our radio audience that the the film that we showed it was golden, it was slow motion. What is this NFL films <laughs> from 1975 right. with the sables there? That was amazing. I loved it. Um, it was it was it wasn't slow motion. I was just slow. <laughs> BYU in Utah. We'll talk about the Cougars in the NFL here in a second, but BYU in Utah this week. This is a fantastic event every year, although the last six for BYU haven't been so fantastic. How would you define the BYU versus Utah rivalry? Well, I'm biased. It is a great rivalry. I've been lucky enough to be involved with some pretty good rivalries. Stanford Cal, when I was coaching at Stanford. Of course, the Baltimore Ravens and the Pittsburgh Steelers, maybe one of the most physical rivalries in the NFL. But I put the BYU-Utah rivalry right there with it because of the emotion, the way, because of the proximity, the way the entire culture interacts with one another. Uh, we, we vacation, uh, we, we uh, uh, ski every uh, year uh, up in Deer Valley. And so we're back to the Salt Lake Valley and back to Utah every year and, and are very aware of that emotion that goes. It's usually during basketball season. I remember when my wife and I got married. What did I do? I took her to a BYU-Utah basketball game <laughs> for our honeymoon. How about that? So, yeah, it is. It's a very emotional series. It's a great one. You're right. If it becomes a little one-sided as it has, sometimes that diminishes it. For it to truly be a rivalry, both teams have to win. And that's the challenge for BYU right now. I think the Cougars are absolutely feeling that. You brought up uh, not just BYU-Utah, but the Ravens-Steelers. And you need to control emotions in those types of games. How do you do that as a coach? Well, you try to counsel your players to weather the storm because there is so much emotion. You don't want to expend all your energies in pregame warm-up in that first couple series. And then you find yourself, God, I can't breathe. You know, you're hyperventilating. So you try to, you never want to put a governor on the emotions of your players during the week as well. You know, because what do they do no matter where they go? They go to the chow hall, whether they're going to pick up their laundry, they go to class. Everybody's talking about the Utah game. It's easy for them to kind of get too ramped up. You try to temper it a little bit so that it builds slowly towards Saturday afternoon. The BYU offense has struggled. 20 points against an FCS team, obviously shut out, didn't cross the 50 against LSU. When a team struggles offensively, what's the rhetoric like, especially when you have a big game coming up? BYU doesn't have Fresno State next. They have Utah next. Yeah, you got to find that one thing. You got to get through the film, and that was LSU is a darn good football team, as we know, and and had total control of the game. When you only run thirty five plays, you you can't. You know, people say, "Well, you should have run more. You should have thrown more." You can't do anything enough. Third down continues to be a problem. What you try to do is break it down and show your team: Look, we are a step away here. We're an an assignment break there. We're, We're an inch here. We're a yard there. If we can find that inch, if we can find that yard, if we cannot make that mistake, then then we can get this thing going. It's tough offensively because it's the total integration of the 11 players. Uh, all it takes is for one player, each of the starters, to make a mistake, can get through the entire game and go, hey, I only made one mistake. And at the end of the game, you got 11, 12, 13 mistakes that can beat you because it, it's that integrated. So – you got to challenge your players and, and try to give them something to hang on to say, we are this this inch, this yard, this step, this missed assignment away from being pretty good. Brian Billick, NFL Super Bowl champion coach, BYU football alumnus. You can follow him and his football genius at Coach Billick on the Twitter machine and on Facebook. Also watch him on Playbook Wednesday, 6 Eastern on NFL Network. Coach, NFL kickoff weekend is always an exciting time. What's that like 
for a player and coach when it all starts again and a new season is underway? Well, what's interesting, particularly, and we, we'll talk about some of the young players that are now coming from BYU into the NFL. And it's an interesting phenomenon as a coach because I lived it for so long. The players come in and the young players and they're in an NFL uniform. They're all excited. And they kind of get used to the rhythm of, of in the NFL practice and going, okay, I'm, I'm getting this down. Then you get into a preseason game and it gets real big and it's fast. But then after four of them, you kind of, okay, I, I understand that. I get the rhythm. Okay, I know what it is to play in the NFL. And then you get to the opener. And it's a whole nother level. And you can see the look on the play, young players' faces like, oh, my God, I had no idea. I mean, it just emotionally, physically, the speed of the game, it's shocking. It shocks the system. And you got to be ready for that with your young players. Say, yeah, this is the NFL. Calm down. You'll get used to this as well. But that's exactly what this is. The other hard thing is everybody's going to win the Super Bowl. You come into the opener. Everybody. You feel good about what you're doing. You got to see all these great athletes. And then the day after, in this case, Monday or I guess Tuesday, because we got two Monday night games on Monday, half the league is in absolute panic mode. <laughs> oh, my God. Are, are we going to win a game? Uh, you know, we are done. And you try to sell both whether you won the game or lost the game, get the players to understand this goes back to the mantra of one game at a time. Because, you know, if, if you lose the first game but can win the second, or if you win the first game but you lose the second, you're one and one. So you got to temper it either way, winning or losing, going, okay, great, guys. That was one game. Now we got to go to the next one. And you just take them one at a time. As cliche as that sounds, because around the NFL, because you only have the 16 games, there is – and you see it a little bit in, in, in college football with the teams that are truly at the upper end that are fighting for the national championship. Right now, Florida State is like, oh, my God, our season's over. You know, one loss. It's where, where, to, where you know, Florida losing – oh, my God, we're dead. Well, no, you're not. And, and you got to – you got to shepherd your team through that emotion. And last night was one of those unique situations, right? Patriots lose at home. Andy Reid, BYU guy, Daniel Sorensen and the Chiefs take down the Patriots with Kyle Van Oy at six tackles. What would you think of Andy Reid and uh, the Chiefs' performance last night? Awesome. Un unbelievable. You know, uh, you're never going to bet against New England at home, Tom Brady. But just talking about it after one week, what, what was the talk last week? Undefeated season for the New England Patriots. Tom Brady can play till he's 60, um, just, you know, on and on. And, and what's, what's the, I'm, I'm doing radio shows all day today. And what's the conversation? Oh my God, New England's dead. Tom Brady is too old. When are they going to put Garoppolo in? I mean, it's, it's amazing what now making no, no, make, make no mistake. That was an unbelievable performance by Kansas city. And now with that kind of performance on the road, in the opener at New England, What's what's this whole weekend? We got? Can Kansas City go undefeated? Boy, this is this is unbelievable. Uh, and what was the thing most impressive? I mean, that was 42 points in Foxborough against the reigning Super Bowl champs. That that was impressive. And they did it in a way that what what's been missing from Andy's offense the last couple of years can't make the big play down the field. Wow. Did they make some big plays? So, yeah, with all but one game down in the books for the NFL, the price of poker has changed, and now the Kansas City Chiefs the team to beat. Yeah, I know Daniel Sorensen and Andy Reid are feeling pretty good about what happened with Kansas City. Kyle Van Noy and Harvey Lange not so much on the other sideline, going through some of those emotions that you have described. Let's talk about quarterback Taysom Hill. He goes from learning under Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay, doesn't make the 53-man roster. They take a chance, hoping he'd come back to the practice squad and that he would clear waivers. That didn't happen. The New Orleans Saints saw what he did and said, we want you to be our third-string quarterback. So Taysom Hill goes from Aaron Rodgers to Drew Brees. What kind of opportunity does Taysom have as a rookie quarterback? Oh, huge, huge. And what a great – and it's a classic case of you always tell the players, and I don't know if it resonates with them, hey, you're auditioning not just for us, for the whole league. And, and, and the rookies have to hold on to that, that you are auditioning for an entire league. You want tape. Obviously, it was good tape. But to be able to go from a Mike McCarthy and an Aaron Rodgers and learning about the nuance of what they do and what makes them so good, to now go to a Drew Brees and a Sean Payton, what a great opportunity to you know, garner the secrets of those to see, okay, what can I adapt in my game to learn from this? Uh, great opportunity for Tyson. Coach, it's always great to talk to you. Again, Playbook back on the NFL Network Wednesday, 6 Eastern. Watch Coach Billick do his thing. 
We appreciate the time. Good luck with all of your radio interviews and trying to talk different fan bases off the ledge today. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It's going to be I, I, my psychology mode.